I'm Mickey Colton. And I'm Chad Dillon. And this, this is, is the Utica, Utica Rally, Rally Cross Series. Series. Coming at you live here at Elkhorn Pike, our second year in a row up here in the Northwest Territory. It's going to be a great race today. <sighs> it's cold. It's and really man. cold. <laughs> You'll get that up there in the Northwest Territory, but these drivers are going to brave the cold. 25 drivers here today battling for that well-sought-after victory. Richard Johnson is the defending winner of this race. He's going to be yes. up first today as the rest of our lineup goes past. Now we're going to be here, and the first man up to go is Richard the Shaft Johnson. And here yes. he goes up to Richard back. the Shaft Johnson. Johnson, one of the longtime veterans of this series. Always good here. He... Won this race last year. Yeah, yes, he did. And he's having a good run so oh, far wow. coming out of the gate as he makes over that oh. crossover jump onto the throughway. Some of our cruising. newer, some of our newer fans may be unused to this track, and they're going to be in for a ride. This is quite the course. Yeah, because you can get a lot of good speed on this track, especially the first part. And see if he hit this turn. Wow, flawless turn from Richard Johnson. Yes, now he's going to actually climb Elkhorn Pike. This is the place where this racetrack is named after as he reaches the summit. And he's going to make the down climb. Oh my goodness, he is cruising. He is not stopping. Look, he even break. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. See, like, now, he's, now he's in the valley. And this, see, one of the things I like about this track is it's longer. So you get to see a lot more terrain going yeah, throughout this. Yeah, exactly. And more he bang is, for your buck. He is really going really fast. I can't even understand how why he's going this fast, but. Man, wow. Man. The shaft is on a roll. Oh, oh, and he even did the check. He did this, the little shortcut there. I think he made yes, it up. La last year, there was a discovered checkpoint. Well, discovered shortcut past that one section there. And Richard Johnston remembered it. Oh. He's going back this time. I think a lot of the newer drivers, like Dylan Young, who's coming up yet next, are taking notes. Oh, here we go. Does he hit it? There goes the Cortez wow. turn. The Estavis Cortez turn has been done successfully. Estavis Cortez not back this year. Yeah. So he will not be able to plow into that again. Now, here about Richard Johnson. This run is looks like it's going to be unbeatable. I mean, if he messes it up at the end, then oh, wow. But here he goes. Yeah, this is actually tracking faster than his run from oh, last year. That goodness. won the race. Coming down to the line. A 139.83, that beats the time from last year. He's got the new track record. Wow, Richard Johnson with an amazing time. Now next up is Dylan Young. He may be too young for this race <laughs> event. I'm going to say this every time. Oh! oh, look at that. A rookie mistake. This front jump here, the first turn, is very difficult for a lot of these new drivers. Yes. They're not expecting it. Yeah, they're going to get a lot of speed coming off of it. Yeah, but he looks, he looks like he's recoiled and came back, and he's got a lot of speed coming into the, the second turn. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these drivers that are coming in this year, they've never driven these type of cars before. Yeah. This series has almost been unheard of in the history of racing. Yes. This is so original of a series. Just open-wheel cars on these insane courses, doing insane stunts, trying to beat the clock. Any Anyone, if you, can learn, if you don't know how to drive a car and can tolerate fast speeds and big jumps, this is for you. I'm telling you. This rally cross is an amazing sport, an amazing series to watch, and I suggest you guys try and get yourself involved in it. I'm glad I get paid by them. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Here we go. Dylan Young, though, after having a missed turn, he's actually having a pretty good run. Yeah, it's not the fastest run, but again, this guy, oh. he's, he's a rookie. He's never driven anything but stock cars, and then you put him in one of these cars, Ooh. and look at this, he gets stopped a little bit. Now he has to go through the hole in the wall here. Yes, the hole in the wall. And can he make And oh, oh! Not gonna happen. Wait, no speed. whoa, he stopped his vertical there. <laughs> and he just looked straight down for a couple he seconds. He really lucked out there. I mean, Dylan Young, as I said, only stock cars. He's never driven one of these cars before. He doesn't know how. He's never gone through a hole yeah. in a bridge before exactly. in an open wheel vehicle. Yeah, and he just actually found the easy checkpoint to get out of here, and he doesn't even know. He found that pretty fast. Yeah, so he, he's been watching, he's been looking yeah. at the old tapes. Oh, like oh, that, that's oh. the big thing. Watching and learning is a big part of this series. Because if, if you, you want perfection when you yeah, go out here today, exactly. Especially uh, some of the veteran drivers, they're going to come out here and know this track, and they're going to try and beat Richard Johnson. Amazing first time. One fifty, one fifty, not the best for Dylan Young. But next up, it is Matt the Replacinator Duel. Yes, Matt the Replacinator Duel it was an amazing car, which I love. I love the black and white car. Yeah, it actually looks a little orange today because it's starting to reflect that uh, sunset that yeah, we're getting yeah. up here. Yeah, that's why it's getting cold, okay? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> why have this event during the day when you can have it at night? When it's freezing. See, when see another thing, these drivers are challenged because it's going to be colder. These drivers have to adjust to the setup. Yeah, but I mean, they're pretty hot in those cars, guarantee it. I, but I meant yeah, but hot. I mean, Especially when, you run, when you run on cold dirt, it runs much different than if you're running on hot yeah, dirt. Yeah, it gets fro- wait. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a lot more frozen, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's a little stiffer. It, it drives differently wow. based on the conditions. Cool. 
Man, look at look at him doing a great job on this section of the course. He's tracking very well. He is cruising going right now. through the valley, just like he's like, yeah, I don't just give ripping through it. Yeah, I don't even care what's going on in my mind. I just go. I just drive. Yeah, Matt Duel is one of those drivers. He he he's a upstart team owner. He owns a small team. He used to home track series. He fueled oh. this car. Oh, almost slips off the road there, but he brings his cars to the track every week. He tries his best. He's always delighted to be here. He's a great face to have. He around. was a great. He was a great replacement for John Sandino's team last year. It really brought life to this series. You know, I really like Matt Duell. You know, he's got a lot of he got a lot of spunk. You know, yeah, he, for, he's got spunk. He's got some moxie, <laughs> but mostly spunk. Yeah, mostly spunk. But yeah, Matt Duell, car number eight, having a great run today as he goes through the last section of the highway, goes through the checkpoint. Cool. Here oh, we go, oh, coming oh, right to oh, He's heading back oh. to the village. Gets a little slowing down there. Here we coming go. to the line. This should be a good time. A 140.98, wow. second place for him. A little off Richard Johnson's time, but should be a good run. Now it's time for Emil Michaels, car number 13. Emil Michaels, yes. Emil. Yes. Emil e Michaels. Emil Michaels. Yeah. Oh, Emil oh Michaels. and he's going off the track. He was here last year, but he had trouble. He actually wrecked right in this turn, so he's actually never seen the rest of this course first person. And right now. Oh, oh God! Oh, again. <laughs> Man, something about this section of the course, not good for Emil Michaels. Wasn't This track was not very good for the uh, Chaos Motorsports team last no, year. No, not at all. I mean, the Cortez term was, term was formed at this stray track. Yeah, but they're back this year. They're working in cooperation with RGE Motorsports. RGE Motorsports really bought them out, but Chaos Racing supplying the motors. Yep. So uh, they're, they're really working hard, trying to get this team going again. Oh, a little too Whoa. hard out of there. <laughs> oh. So you gotta watch out going to the valley because there's that bump there now. People, are, I've gotten a couple people at the at the track asking me why is that little bump there, and it's when, why don't they just tear it down? And I tell them, it makes it more difficult. Yeah, it throws off the drivers, especially when you're coming at full four speeds coming off the mountain. You, you don't expect it at all, especially for these new drivers that didn't even study. If they didn't study, they're gonna just plow right into there. But if you're Emil Michaels, you just forgot and you just kind of drove into it. Yeah, though to be fair, I mean you're under a lot of pressure when you're in these cars. Yeah. I mean yeah. it's not a low, low um, pressure situation. Oh, there's a, also there's a high risk factor. I mean if you fall upside down on your head, there's a possibility you could die. Tyler Benoit almost died at this track yes, last he year. He almost got decapitated in one section of the but, course. Luckily, he just missed him. And yeah. We don't, we don't want him dead. No, no, he's actually becoming a Pretty good star into the Rally Cross series. We don't want to lose him. Yeah, so here oh, we go. Neil Michaels really? back to him. Coming into the end of the track. A 137. What? Fifth, wait, wait, no, sorry. We got we got the right time. It's a 147.15. Oh, okay, about to say. He just quit <laughs> the second. Yeah, I was saying, <laughs> we got confused. He was tracking slowing. Uh, a little bit of an error when we first got the reading. Billy Bishop, the man. The myth. myth the, the legend. legend Billy, Billy Bishop. Bishop. <laughs> yeah, Billy Bishop, car number two. <sighs> he came here last year and destroyed his car. Now he's back this year. Actually, he's tracking pretty well. Yeah, well, you, Billy Bishop is not having a bad season this year. Yeah, I mean, he started off slow at Yuma, but I don't know what he's done. Like, I, I'm he gonna hasn't have... fallen down a mount like like really bad. Yeah, he hasn't done anything really bad this season. We want him to do bad sometimes so we can <laughs> laugh and enjoy ourselves with Billy Bishop. Yeah, ma he makes us feel better about ourselves. Yeah, he does. He definitely He's the does. Matt Evans of this course. Yeah, but Matt, yeah, but yeah, yeah. But Matt right. Evans, he's good at the yeah. driving portion, yes, so we gotta have someone. Wow, that makes us Billy feel Bishop is actually. Yeah, he's flying. He's tracking close to Richard Johnson. And I guess uh, my stats person talking to me over here, and he's saying that Billy Bishop, before the season started, he went up to the Himalayas. And he was driving his car around there on the various pikes and peaks. Oh, really? Yeah, so he's been really training. Maybe that's why he's really good at Alcorn Pike, you know, because he was training on the uh, pikes uh, and peaks, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> but anyway, Billy Bishop heading through the Cortez turn, about to go on to wow, the highway. Wow, a nice smooth turn. Yeah, very good. Didn't Cortez it up. <laughs> yes, and now he's on the ice highway because it's freezing and getting colder and colder by the second. Luckily, it's summer, so it's, uh, it's a little less severe. Just a little bit. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> Oh my goodness, he cut that perfectly. Billy Bishop has a top time! 139-43, he beats Richard Johnson, currently Billy has Bishop. the track record. Amazing job by him, and this is Joseph Bryant, car number 23. Now, this car may look a little different to you, it looks a little more yellow. Um, it, there's no change in the paint scheme, it's just that the lighting at this track has been kind of glowing differently off these cars. Well, it's just a nice glow of that sunset, which is not warming me up at all. Okay? <laughs> 
<laughs> calm, in, calm down, Chad. It, it's beautiful looking. It's just not warming me up. Okay? <laughs> Stupid sunset. Come on, Chad. You get paid well. You can afford oh, yourself a mink coat. Oh! Joseph Bryant going for a flip, going up the Elkhorn Pike. Saves it, though. Man, he's starting to take uh, Seth Cole's mojo as the stuntman of the oh, team. Oh, I mean, if you're on the team, you got to get some of the mojo. But, you know, Joseph Bryant. I always like Joseph Bryant because... He's, he's, got, he's very, very, very consistent driver, I think, because he's always in the middle of the pack, but I feel like, you know, I always say this about a lot of the middle pick, middle of the pack drivers. They can, this season, probably redeem themselves and really bring themselves out in the top spot because they're veterans now. And you got all these little rookies here that they can show them how the ways, but they're ready to go. Yeah, and though you may like Joseph Bryan, if you ask people in the Utica Home Track Series, they may say differently. He's been one of the most aggressive drivers in that series. Has gotten more penalties than any other driver in the Utica Home Track Series. So, Joseph Bryan, as, as, I think I've said this before, as long as he's by himself on a racetrack, people like him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's good. That aggression probably helps him in this race event because you got to be aggressive in Rallycross. If you don't take the risk and take, you know, take those, dri those giant big jumps and everything, you won't be able to do good. That's all, you know what I mean? Yeah, and also, with the Utica Home Series, there's an ad pressure, because not all these cars are running the same. But as he finishes the race, 143.52, eh, that's a little lower. He's fourth on the grid at the moment. But next up is Adam Dunlap, car number 21. He's been a real surprise story this year. Yeah, Adam Dunlap, not a very good home track series driver at all. Not at all, he's no. Had a, he's had terrible luck with that. But Rally Cross, I think he's really found his fit. And Adam Dunlap only having one race last season, which was at... It was at uh, Sar. Well, yes, yeah, 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 and I think he placed second in that event. Yeah, he, second or third. He yeah. did really good. You know, having that first, you know, first race being a great first race. Right now, he's up tracking very well. Adam Dunlap, I feel like he could be one of the bigger stars and have a, like a possible contention in the championship. Yeah, I mean, he's got a good team behind him. Benoit Motorsports fueling this car. A little help from his own personal team, um, Broke Dunlap Racing. Mm -hmm. Slows up a little bit here, so he can make sure he makes that turn. See, he's done his homework. He did not come to Elkhorn Pike last year, and he remembered that turn in the valley. Yes. So you got you got to watch out for that bump. But yeah, Adam Dunlap got some good equipment behind him. He's really looking for. He's he's always happy to be here in that car. He's always got a smile on his face. Oh, oh, okay. But he's always got a smile on his face when he comes on to the track, and he, you know, especially with the sunset, he probably's like, ooh, sunset. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like the sunset. Wear a coat. I oh, am wearing a coat and three <laughs> layers underneath it. I'm just wearing one coat and I'm fine. You know what? Shut up. Okay, maybe I'm just cold hearted or something. I don't know. <laughs> let's continue back on to Adam Dunlap. Yeah, race. let's get out of your personal problems right and now, go Adam, to Adam Dunlap. Which is having a great run right now. He's, He's tracking very well. He's close to the top time. Makes it through the a really good job near yeah. the uh, at that last turn there. It's very hard wow. to do. Wow, one thirty nine eighty nine, not the top time, but third place overall. Next up is Jake Williams. Yes, Jake Williams here. Jake Williams is one of those rookies that I feel like has a lot of potential. I feel like Jake Williams has the possibility to be a really good driver because the way he drives, I, it, I see a lot of I see a lot of skill and maturity in his driving. Yeah, I mean he, he's kind of a driver that. He seems like he's come from other series, and he comes yeah. into this one. Even though we, we have no idea where he came from, but... Uh, I don't really know exactly <laughs> his background. I know he's running a NASCAR Road Racing Challenge oh, Cup. Oh, smash into the wall right there. But continue. Yeah, he was in Zanfort for uh, that race. And uh, he was so close to getting a point that he's running top 10. Ran out of fuel on the last Ooh, lap. Finished yeah. 16th. Only the top 15 get points. You know, that's kind of that's a, a killer. That's kind of a fault, which is, really can't be your fault. It's just planning and timing of your pit stops for that. But um, yeah, his, his, driving, his driving ability is actually very good, especially for his lack of, you know, participation in a lot of the series. Yeah, he hits his marks. He doesn't, like, he isn't like some drivers that just, like, find that perfect line and just, like, barely cut the corners. He just runs the basic run. Yeah, he just does what he has to do to get through the, the track. Yeah, and I think he'll, oh. he'll eventually work from close call going through the hole in the wall, but having a great run so far... I mean, I, he's a good driver. He would be good if, uh, as a driving instructor, like when he's done with his entire racing career, maybe going to retire a bit. Maybe he could teach at the uh, Utica Home Track Driving Academy. Yeah, because he's got that that nice, nice driving style that a lot of people can follow suit with. Because you won't get, you won't be too, you won't take too many chances, and you will be able to drive and get yourself a good time. Yeah, he's consistent. Whether yeah. it's good or bad, he's always going the same thing Finish throughout a, the run. But finishes with a 142.37. Not bad. Fifth at the moment. Could be a little better. As next up 
we have the 15 of Michael Aurelio, who did great. Uh, did he do great later last year? Um, I forget. I, I know he did relatively well earlier in the season. Um, taking a look at the hey, stats. checking a producer here? It was about mid-pack this year. I'm, yeah. I'm probably thinking of other tracks, but Michael Aurelio is a, is a really top-notch driver. Well, of course. I mean, he was in a championship run until he had a little slump near the end of the season last year. But now that there's 20 races in this season, he got more ground to cover. I mean, if you get a little slack in for two races, it's not going to kill you too much because you still got so much possibility to catch up in the point standings. Yes, and Michael Aurelio, I mean, he's been kind of down on his luck lately. Yeah. Like, his Utica Home Track Series team, they have not been able to get the funding together to run the full schedule. Mm -hmm. They've, like, in the times he's attempted races, he's been really failing to qualify for them. So he's been, like, really disheartened. This Rallycross Series really could help the Aurelios out. Well, I mean, the Aurelio brothers... Well, I mean, they got a championship driver already on them. Chris yeah, Mario. true. You but do have a championship. Michael Aurelio tracking faster than the best time right now. Michael Aurelio having a really good run. Yes, Michael Aurelio doing great at the moment. Yes, he is. <laughs> and I'm still cold! <laughs> My god, I, you're just going to whine about this throughout the entire race, aren't you? Yes! <laughs> it's entertaining, isn't it? You love it, don't you? You love when I'm angry. Yeah, I think I think now from now on, fans are just gonna be throwing ice cubes at you. Great, <laughs> great, just great, just great. Just continue. Ah, uh -huh, dance, monkey, dance. Yeah, just continue what you're doing. But Michael Aurelio here with the top time of 139.07. That's gonna almost blow Billy Bishop out of the water. And that was a great time by Michael Aurelio. William Duncan coming up next, and this driver has struggled these past two races. Oh, what is he doing, William Duncan? I, he didn't even turn. Is uh, there? A, <laughs> I wonder if there's actually an issue with the car that. That uh, doesn't oh. seem normal. Well, um, I think there uh, is. Oh, 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 oh man! He's already out. We're getting a report. He has a steering issue. It just would not turn. And well, it's pretty evident. He crashes early. First DNF of the evening, and now it's time for Seth Cole, the stunt man. Speaking of the stuntman, yeah, but it seems like he always comes on cue when he needs to be. Oh, and he whoa! Takes look at that jump. A little risky. Oh, but he's fine. He's fine. Seth he Cole's keeps fine. it going, baby. I'm not sure if that's tracking a little better or a little slower. Oh, that... look at <laughs> oh, he's whoa. grinding. He, oh, he man. just knows what he's doing. With he's this. going to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater <laughs> on that first section of the course there. See, that's the stunt, man. Always bringing the show, whether yeah. he wins or not. Yeah, I know. He's always... Which at the current one, I think he's not. I don't think he's won the race yet. <laughs> no, but the fact that he actually does pretty well in the point standings for just going out there and driving... Have fun. He's I just, think he has fun. He probably has a lot of fun when he's driving these cars. Of course cars. he does. I mean, if he gets to put himself in a position where he could fall, now he knows how to fix himself because he's the stuntman. Yeah, it's a shame because last year he was running about mid-pack. He could have had a shot at a championship last year, but that injury at Hong Kong mm -hmm. put him out for a couple races. Yeah. He had his uh, sister whoa, Mary Cole. Whoa, here? whoa, this car is a little wonky going through this section of the course. I hope nothing's wrong with that thing. We don't want Seth Cole to have anything wrong with him. Here we go. He oh, goes oh. oh, no, no, no. Overturn. The stuntman has fallen. The stuntman overturned. Unfortunate no. for him. I, I think that car just got away from him. He just couldn't keep it going through those trees. The precision is key. And now it's time for Austin Ogo. This is my man, Austin Ogo. Where we gonna go? Austin Ogo. We're gonna go. Austin, <laughs> Austin Ogo. We're gonna go. Austin Ogo. Yo, yo, yo. yo. Austin Ogo, the reason I'm alive. <laughs> yes, exactly. Austin Ogo. But, oh, 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 don't, don't, don't. A little finish. wonky in the turn there, but yeah. Austin Ogo, the fans love him up here, up north. People really digging the Ogo fever. He mm. was in the Jazz Car race, and he was top ten. The fans were going crazy, signing autographs everywhere. Yeah. His merchandise is just selling out. I mean, he could start his own company and... Well, I mean, like his major, like a major company, and probably just stop driving. He'd be fine with that. Fun fact: If you take all of Austin Ogo's fans, yeah, you have enough people to start a planet. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> you could start a planet with one person. I mean, like an Earth-sized planet. Wow. Because wow, that's a lot. Of like people. and populate and have whoa, dozens. Whoa, whoa. No! 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 Austin, wait, wait! Wait, are you trying to get back on his, tree, uh, his wheels? He's trying to make a snow. Can he do it? Can he, Can he do, do it? it? Oh. No! Oh, awesome. That tree must have been a conspirator against him. Yeah, probably, yeah We'll probably. have that tree chopped down for next year. 
unfortunately not going to make the top five. And now it's time for Chris Aurelia. We talked about his brother earlier. We are Tigers, mighty, mighty Tigers. But yeah, Chris Aurelio has really struggled this year for being the championship winner last year. Last in points going into this event. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Chris Aurelio. Maybe, I, he just, you know, last season though, he was also down, you know, in the beginning of the season. You know, he didn't have a good start. And maybe he'll just pull ahead again like last season. Who knows? The big thing that I think really affected these Aurelios was the Utica Home Track Series and their season, how it's going. Because neither of them can run the full schedule. And when they are on track, they've had tons of bad luck. Yeah. It's been pretty rough for the Aurelio brothers trying to get a team working. They even added a third car hoping that he would do well. He made a race, uh, Jonathan Benton's, but got wrecked out early. It's been a real, It's been a real struggle for these guys and... Despite winning the Rallycross Championship, they've been really down in the dumps lately. Mm -hmm, exactly. But, you know, Chris Aurelio, I, 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 love the, I love the Aurelio brothers for what they do, and especially with the Rallycross, because if it wasn't for the Aurelio brothers, let's see, this, this, you know, there wouldn't be a champion. You know, you know, <laughs> no one would have won the championship. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> but, you know, they brought Rallycross to a point where its popularity has really risen. I mean, this came out as a sport that no one heard of, and now it's... You know, it's an awesome sport, and it's awesome to watch. Yeah, and being the first winner in a sport that's just, yeah. like, completely out of the blue, like, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you looked at NASCAR and the Craftsman Truck Series when they had that first season in 1995, Mike Skinner winning the championship. I mean, it was something that no one ever did before. Exactly, yeah. it, It's an achievement. And now coming to the line, Chris Arreo, a 139.47, wow. great time, yeah. third place, not going to beat his brother, but a great run on his behalf. This is Kyle Sosnowski, car number six. And again, see, it's, it's kind of hard to recognize some of these cars with the lighting on them. It's kind of throwing them off. Yeah. Looks yeah. a little yellower yeah, than usual. Yeah, just keep bringing up the sunset. Just keep bringing up the sunset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to turn on heat in the booth? Yes. Oh, wait. We don't have it. Because <laughs> this is a temporary structure. But now Kyle Sosnowski, he's already had a good run in the Dance Car Series. He was on the pole for the first race in that, which is an achievement of in and of itself, yeah. but unfortunately, bad luck befell him when uh, Nicholas Guerra, he uh, got airborne off track, whoa, slid see? into a... Whoa! Oh, oh, oh no! More bad luck for oh. Sosnowski. Wrecked out in the Dash Car event, flips over in the Rally Cross Series event. Not a good run for Kyle Sosnowski. And next up, it is John Cittadino, car number five. Now, John Cittadino is noted for his bad luck. Yeah. He has been incredibly unlucky. His team has had struggles. But right now, trying to do his best here today. And oh! oh no! But no, he's, he's somehow, going to Joseph Bryant. It. He somehow managed to <laughs> is, come back on. Is his luck coming back? Don't. Who knows? <laughs> Probably not. But John said, you know, I mean, he, we know he's a talented driver. Yeah, we know. We've we seen know. him in the Phillips Cup Series, other NASCAR related leagues. We've seen him in NSCRA. He's almost won championships in all of them. But for some reason, in just Utica Home Track Series related leagues, he just can't get it done. You know what I think happened? What? Because Billy Bishop was his teammate, right? Yeah. Now, do you notice that Billy Bishop is probably going to start doing better than John? See, Billy Bishop, he extracted the good <laughs> luck from John Cittadino when they were teammates. And Billy Bishop left. And he took that, that mojo with him. So Are you saying that Billy Bishop is some sort of succubus? Yes. <laughs> Yes, he is. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't deny it. <laughs> no, not at all. Yes, you heard it here first, folks. What was that? <laughs> You've heard it oh, here I, first. No, you're good. You're good. Just You've heard it here first, folks. Billy Bishop is a creature from hell that sucks the talent out of otherwise good drivers. Woo! And uses it to his advantage. Yes, yes, he does. I'm glad we have scientific backing for this. <laughs> and thank God Billy Bishop doesn't watch these races or else he would be offended. <laughs> He'd be fine. Oh, what? 145.91. That's pretty good. <laughs> no, it's not. It's modestly yeah. good. And now it's time for Ray Davis, car number seven, Captain, Captain Clutch. Clutch. Yeah. Wow, we didn't even time that. We got that perfect. Synchronization. But yeah, Captain Clutch, Ray Davis, a really good driver, and it's always good to have him around the track. We really like Ray Davis. We always like Ray Davis. He's a little quiet, but, uh, I well, mean... you know, it gives us as the, you know, the reporters, you know, because we always like to talk about, you know, the last minute seconds, just like any sport, like basketball, football, the last seconds. And Ray Davis being that exciting factor near the end of each race really gives us something to look forward to. 
Yeah, he's always he's always kind of there. He's, <laughs> he's always there. <laughs> he's got he, he's pretty quiet, but then he comes out with this amazing run. You're like, whoa, where did he come from? Like right now, he's tracking fairly well. You yeah. also call him the Silent Serpent. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Nah, that'd be Richard Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Richard the Shaft Johnson. With that first run, though. Richard the Silent Serpent sh Shaft Johnson. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! No! And Ray Davis down for the count. Captain Clutch is just not going to get it done today. It's yes. a shame. Oh, man. Oh, man. Next up it is the White Mamba, Kevin White. Card number 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just had nothing to say about him. <laughs> no, no, we're good. We're good. I just wanted to be. Yeah, Kevin White, uh, a, a top notch driver, runs in the NASCAR uh, Road Racing Challenge Cup as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Though so far only one race, not much success there. He's going to be going to Germany. Soon to run the race too, so oh, wow. we'll have to see how he's traveling a lot. That works. Yeah, I mean, when you're if you run all three, the Utica Home Track Series, the NASCAR Road Racing Challenge Cup, and the Utica Rally Cross Series, you're going to be globe trekking a lot. You know, it probably makes his life pretty exciting, but you probably get tired after a while. Yeah, he probably doesn't see his kids too much. No, that's kind of. I mean, they, they probably come to the track when he's in America, and you know, we have off time occasionally. Yeah, occasionally. Yeah. But yeah, Kevin White going through the valley right now. Timing is pretty good. He's not the best at the moment. You know, he's nowhere near where uh, Michael Aurelio is, but he's, he might get oh, off. Oh, oh, oh. But he Whoa. gets back on his wheels and he's doing it. Yeah, yes, Kevin White back on the wheels, and now he's gonna make the shortcut. Oh wait, oh, no, wait. he actually is gonna go for the jump. Wait, Whoa! Wait, hold on, that somehow Whoa. worked. Wait, I think he's the first person to ever go up that and get that to somehow work. And, oh. Whoa! Close call. I think he, we're getting reported that this car is not handling well for him, but he's making it work. You know, if he finishes, I'll be pretty impressed because. If his car's not working, especially if you're to finish with that problem. But, ooh, hit the. Yeah, wall. coming out, coming out of the Estados <laughs> Cortez turn. He's gonna make contact with the wall. I like how Estados Cortez is forever immortalized in one humiliating turn. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> in all of his successes in road racing and his oh. fancy shoes, wow. I don't know. Pretty smooth <laughs> turn, but Kevin White here and he finishes with a 143.66. Which is not top five, but it's not that bad of a time. Yeah, he might track relatively well in the grand scheme of things. Next up, it's time for the Black Mamba. The Black Mamba. Matt Evans. Car number 17. This car is a very top-notch car. Running for City and Red Motorsports with a little help from Evans Engineering Incorporated. See, when you got... See, a good thing... Another thing with this series is... You see a lot of teams starting to, like, double up. Because these cars are not cheap. No, no, not a... If you crash these one of these cars... Oh, wait! Like that! Oh, wait! Whoa! Good man, Evan Sims. Oh, he's going backwards. What? He's going <laughs> down the map! No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Matt Evans. I've never seen anyone wreck over there like that. Well, he managed to get him so back at track. He's not going to get anywhere near the top time, but the fact that you finish is all, it's all that matters. That's pretty disappointing because he, he was a favorite coming into this we race weekend. He's a, he's a favorite to any race that we do in Rallycross. I mean, he's got he's like that. He's like basically like the Ray Davis. You don't know where he's going to come from. He's just going to pop out of nowhere, and he's going to race well. He's actually one of the best Utica Home Track Series drivers of all time. He's yes. got seven wins in the a actual Utica Home Track Series. And then he's got one victory here, so he has eight combined between the the three and he's one, you know, related series. He's in the lead because in Rallycross, there's ten races, and the only person to win more than two times was um, was Dylan White. Yeah. Yeah, so everyone... Well, we know, uh, Michael Aurelio won twice as well. Oh, I did win twice. So those two guys are the only ones that win twice. So he's in the, the, the basically out of the other eight, or no, not other eight, the other six drivers actually win. And if he wins, if he can win another series, he'll already be in the top three of the rally cross. I mean, just just being in that ranking already is good enough. Yeah, he doesn't ras does yeah, he doesn't run the NASCAR series, so uh, it doesn't. it's not like he's going to get the triple threat wins. Yeah. There are a couple drivers that um, do that. Oh, but, uh, oh, oh. oh, man. This run has just been absolute struggles for Matt Evans. I think Wait, I have here that his back right tire is actually flat. Look at this. That yeah. car is just... Yeah. 158 on the dot. Terrible run for him. Next up, it's time for Dom Cap. The Capinator. <laughs> we'll come up with a nickname for him. Yeah, we don't know what we got for Caps yet. I came up with something for his brother, though. His brother, Dustin, is Dustin Bustin Caps. Wait, guys, I have an idea for the comments, the people that, uh, that comment on our race. Um, basically, if you got a cool nickname for any of the drivers that don't have a nickname, give us one. Yeah, we'll, we'll, 
Yeah, if you, if we get like fan nicknames coming in here, it'll yeah. be it'll be great. Yeah, I mean we'll, we'll it'll we'll, be like derpy hooves. Yeah, no, not at all. So Actually, it would be exactly like that. Would it be like derpy hooves? Yeah, because yeah, that was fan nicknamed, I believe. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. So yeah, so if you have a cool name, especially for Dom Caps, as an example, if you have a cool nickname for Dom Caps or any of the other drivers, just put it in the comment section below and we'll use it. Trust me. We'll Speaking of Dom Caps, currently running fairly well at the moment. Yeah, he's having a great run. And also, I just want to point out, this is one of my favorite cars in the series. You like every car. I know, I mean, the the paint, the painting is just so intricate on these machines. Mm -hmm. That's basically where most of the expenses whoa, go. Whoa! whoa but it's whoa, somehow boy. Edgy. That wasn't as crazy as Kevin White, but that was pretty risky itself. Yeah. Dumb. Almost risky caps. Y yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the Capinator putting caps on bottles everywhere in yes. the U.S. of a the cap trap. Cap, the cap. <laughs> we, we can't think of anything for you, buddy. You, you, someone, yeah. someone help us. The CD ROM Dom. <laughs> No, it, no. We just completely ignore Dom Cap. But run. right now he's having a pretty good, decent run. Yeah, actually he's, he's starting to fall off a little bit here. Uh, One forty-four. 84, not the best time you could have. A bit of a shame, but next up is Tyler Benoit, car number three. He's won a race earlier this year. Yeah, he, are, he already has won one, and he's ready to go. Yeah, now, he's kind of looking for retribution here, because last year this track almost tried to kill him. Yeah, he might be a little hesitant, though. You know, having that in the back of your mind that you almost killed yourself might make you hesitant on that jump, especially in the, the, the hole in the wall was what almost killed him. Yeah, I mean, they, they did some uh, cockpit footage. And uh, it was literally, he survived it by a couple inches. Yeah, if he, if he was a couple inches away, he, we would not have Todd Benoit driving at this very moment. He would have been either dead or paralyzed. So either of the two, he would not have been driving. Or para dead. Yeah, whatever that means. <laughs> okay. But anyway, Todd Benoit, car number three. He is cruising right now. Yes, this car is tracking very close to the top. Goes up the mountain. Wow. Look at that. Keeps it under control up there. Okay. Now he's got to be careful now because he's coming up to that turn that oh, almost oh, destroyed oh. him oh, here one we go. year ago. Here we go. Can he do it again? Let's see. Can he make it through? He Whoa. Won. It was a little close, but he makes it through, and he's going to survive this time. He's probably so happy right now. You don't understand probably how happy he is. But right yeah, now, it's going to take a lot, of, a lot of talking through this to get him through it. That's what the crew chief is here for. Hold, hold on a second. He is right with Michael Aurelio's time. If he can hit the highway just a little better, he might get the top time. Yes, he's actually tracking really well. He's starting to pull away from Aurelio. Oh, here we go. Can they make it through Whoa. here? Great job in the final turn there. Here goes Ty Benoit for his second win of the season. Well, not win, but... 138 wow. 2 an entire second ahead of Michael Aurelio. That was beautiful. That I don't think anyone's going to be able to beat that time. We were surprised when Richard Johnson beat his time from last year. Yeah. And look at that. Blows it out of the water. But now here comes Vladimir Petrov, the Russian rocket, report, the Russian rocket, who just failed to take off this year. Yeah, I think it, I think it's been a delayed, just been a delayed, boom. <laughs> <laughs> you I know, could, I kind of wonder, like, if something's happened to him, like the, like in his personal life, because in the youth contract series, he's fallen off too. He started off the season really well. He was looking like he was going to lock himself in, just. Wasn't making races on road courses, which are his specialty. Maybe we should get him in the booth and see if we can get this, if an interview with him or something. Yeah, I mean, Vladimir Petrov, I mean, what happened to him? He's, he's starting Whoa, to fizzle out. Whoa, what's going on right there with the car? Yeah, this car is not looking well at all. And see, this is just more of Vladimir Petrov just having a struggle. And actually, you can kind of tell when things are bad. They actually decide not to put him in the season finale at oh, Myrtle oh, Beach. Oh, he's stalled. Oh, man. He's trying. Oh, oh. a little spark in his... He's Left trying higher. to get it going. He's still struggling. Oh, he's got to back he, up. This is going to kill him. It looks like Matt Evans is going to be a little happier. He's going to beat someone that didn't wreck. But, uh, yeah, that's oh, not looking oh. good. Flies up the top there. That wasn't too bad, no. but, I mean, he was going at a slower speed. Yeah, there's obviously something wrong here with Vladimir oh. Petrov. Whoa. Man. Oh, man. This is actually a pretty depressing run. I, You know, but, you know... Vladimir Petrov, he's still a rookie in the Rallycross series. You got to give him some time. You got to give him.
get him working him in a little bit. He's got true, but I mean, I mean there's 17. What about what about the other series? I, I, mean, I know, I know. But he's got 17 more races in the Rallycross series. Maybe things will turn around for him. You always got to think of the bright side. Yeah, we, let, let's hope because I mean they've already they've already said he's not going to be running at Myrtle Beach. They're yeah. going to put Nicky Allen in the car. I don't. And he's the regional driver for the uh, Dad's Car Series instead of the main driver. They put Hans Windhelm yeah. as their main driver. He's coming across the line a two oh seven fifty five abysmal time. And now it is time for car number 11, Aaron Williams Jr., the Blue Mamba. The Blue Mamba. Because <laughs> we don't have a nickname for you yet. We're going to call you the Blue Mamba with some white lines on you. There, there's the Blue Mamba. <laughs> He's driving. Now, Aaron Williams, you know, a rookie in this, this series and this season, um, Aaron Williams is... I, from what I've seen, he's not that bad of a driver. He's actually a very decent driver. He's kind of, in my opinion, he's the opposite of Jake Williams. Jake Williams, he's been, like, consistent, but kind of making a splash. Aaron Williams Jr. really hasn't made much of a splash so far. I mean, I, granted, it is a young season. Yeah, it's only oh, our yeah. third race. Exactly. But so far, it hasn't really caught anyone's eye yet. Yeah, but I, I, I feel like there's, like I said, there's a lot of races to get catch someone's eye. I mean, you could win a race and be like, oh, wow, this guy might be someone good. Then he's got, like, five more races or, or ten more races, depending on when he wins a race, to win another one. You know, you got and your confidence level can be boosted and go up and down, just in any kind of series. Yes, and Aaron Williams Jr. Oh, oh, Whoa, oh, slides oh. off course. Let's see if he can get back on track. Oh, oh that's that's going to be... That's going to kill us. See, that, that's why he hasn't made much of a splash so far, because he's always been running about Jake Williams' speed, but has had an issue during his run. Like, Kansas City, he crashed out of it early. Well, I mean, Kansas City... Well, everyone, everyone did. Everyone crashed Jake out. Williams... I think he finished or came close to finishing at least. Yeah. But yeah, here we go. Going around the Cortez turn, Aaron Williams Jr. having a eh, moderate run at the moment. He just got to try and bring it home, see if he can beat Matt Evans. This car is actually starting to wall ride there on the on the highway. There might be a flap, you know, for the air drift coming off his car. Who knows? You never know with these cars. Oh, Yeah, man. I mean, these cars take a lot of abuse throughout the race there. Something is probably going to go wrong. And a 148.89. Uh, that's... Pretty low. That is probably Beats Dylan Young. Last and now it's up for uh, Emily Michaels. Only two more drivers after her. So Emily Michaels coming to the track. Emil was here last year. Emily was not. Let's see if she can do better than Emil. Emily looking like a pretty good driver this season. I, I've got a lot of confidence in Emily Michaels. Emily Michaels. Um, Emily. Emily. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, one of the only girl, uh, the only girl in this uh, this this season, and yeah, that they kind of like the Danica Patrick, you know thing. Yeah, only there's actual talent. Yeah, here. there's actual talent with Emily Michaels, and I feel like Emily Michaels could be a big shocker to a lot of people, especially if she wins a race. If she wins a race, oh buddy, things are gonna take off from there. Yeah, because closest someone's came is uh, Mary Cole, who came second. Yeah, at pa Panakanui Atoll. And that was a beautiful run by her. I, I, no one was expecting it. Someone. But here's the thing, though. She was a replacement driver just for Seth Cole, and when he got hurt in Hong Kong, just imagine. Yeah, I just imagine like, if she raced an entire season. She didn't even test before that. No. She. Um, oh. All they did was they went around in a field near their home, near their um, base of operations, and mm -hmm. they just kind of drove it around like a forest trail. That's all they really did for. Yeah. Her. They really didn't know how to train her for it, and she managed to just. Show them what's for. Now Emily Michaels is in that same position. She's got. She's trying to prove that she can do this. You know, Emily. Yeah, like that. That's that motivation behind, especially on a girl in any series, like a racing series. That's the motivation. You had that motivation behind you to carry you through for every race. I mean, you kind of wish that it wasn't judged by that. I like, I, I know it's, it's, but, that's just how it is. But I mean, uh, when you see these drivers trying to do it, you but start looking less at the gender, more at the driver. 142-44, not the top five. But a great run by Emily Michaels, nonetheless. Next up, Alex, the cream machine tanker. Yes, <laughs> with his cream-coated car. She looks a little orange in the sunset. <laughs> you had to bring up the sunset, okay? Relax, when we're done, we're going to... Where are we going? I think we're going to the Everglades. Oh, great! <laughs> we're going to go incredibly warm in Florida. And Alex Tank... Look at this run ta Alex Tanker's having in the beginning stages here. It's going pretty well for him. And as you say that, he gets into a wall. <laughs> but look at that. He still looks fast coming off of it. Yeah, but Alex Tank, yeah, Alex Tanker has a lot of potential, and he can race really well. I don't... He just hasn't had that spark. He needs a spark. Yeah, I mean, last year he was mid-pack. Mid yeah. He didn't have a really good season. Barely above the drivers that raced part-time. He was right with William Duncan, his teammate. They were like the two guys in the middle of the pack all the time. And 
they never had that big race. And I now, mean, you know Alex Tanker can win a race. He's won before in uh, Utica Home Track Series at yeah. Talladega, which is a very difficult track to win at. Yeah, that was a great race. Yeah, and more, more recently, his uh, teammate, uh, Brock McMahon, he won at uh, Kyle Lamy, yeah. which is a great feat by uh, that team. So that team, they just need the, they can feel a good car. They just got to... They just gotta be able to do it. Let's just see if everything works that weekend. Right now, he's tracking faster than last season, and he's doing it with style. He's doing a very good job. Alex Tanker might be able to actually make top five. Tanker's is one of those understatement drivers out there. Like you, you just look. You you talk about Alex Tanker. You don't really mention Ooh. all the good driving he's done. But he's a he's a quality driver. And here he goes coming through the end here. This is actually tracking pretty well. Here we go. This doesn't look to be Todd Benoit well. What a 139.64. Oh. That's going to be top five. Fifth place for Alex Tanker. Great job. Last driver of the evening is Colin Bartell. Car number 19. Now, Bartell is an excellent driver, and he is... His biggest claim to fame was his second place at the Megville... Well, sorry, his first place at the Megville Bowl Run and only his second start in the Utica Home Track Series. Yeah, and that, that was an amazing feat by itself. But, yeah, and um, he almost won uh, the NASCAR race in his first go, but yeah. uh, John Tenford beat him. Now, Colin Bartell, an, a, another a, another driver in this series that you got hasn't had a spark yet, especially being a rookie and only have raced three races. I mean, you haven't you haven't had enough races to have a spark. But I, I, you know, there's a lot of potential in all these rookies, especially when, in the first season when we looked at all these drivers. You see all the you know the, the first 17. You look at them. Who's going to be the star? And it, with this season, exactly when you add. Uh, eight more drivers into a. Oh no! What is it? Is it eight? Yes, eight. Yeah. When you add eight more drivers into a series, you don't know what who the star is going to be of the rookie rookie bunch. So you never know. I mean, especially when it's the beginning of a season, you got to figure them out. Yeah, and Bartel is a top that job. Oh no! no. Wait! Oh stuck. no! Oh. Bartel unfortunately failed to beat Tyler Benoit. He fit in there like a puzzle. <laughs> and there we go. Winning this round, Tyler Benoit, his second career, Utica Rallycross Series victory. Wow. He's up there with Michael Aurelio, and Dylan White was multiple-time winners. He's followed by Bishop, Aurelio Tanker, Johnson, Dunlap, Duell, Williams, and Emily Michaels rounding out the top ten. Then we got Joseph Bryant, Kevin White, the White Mama, Dom Caps, the Capinator, John Sandino, Emil Michaels, Aaron Williams Jr., Dylan Young, maybe too young, Matt Evans, Vladimir Petrov and Colin Bartel run out your top 20. Then lastly, Austin Ogo, Seth Cole, Ray Davis, Kyle Sosnowski, William Duncan, all having disappointing finishes for them. Now, we're going to take a look at your point standings. This is the full point standings right now. Tyler Benoit sitting on top by one point over Joseph Bryant, last week's winner. Then look at that. Adam Dunlap in third place. Impressive run. Richard Schaff Johnson, Matt Evans, Billy Bishop wow. in sixth place. Dom Caps, Emily Michaels, Matt Duell, Kevin White rounding out your top ten. Then we got Jake Williams, Seth Cole, Alex Tanker, Michael Aurelio, Kyle Sosnowski, Austin Ogle, my man, Ray Davis, Captain Clutch, really low, sitting low. Aaron Williams Jr., John Sinito, and Colin Bartell rounding out your top 20. Chris Ray are going to gain a little bit this week. Emil Michaels, Dylan Young, Vladimir Petrov, William Duncan, dead last in the standings near opposite of his Utica Home Track Series performance. Next up, we're going to be going to Florida for the Everglades. It's going to be a great race. It's going to be warm! Yay! Bye!